Thank you, Costin, for the good luck. And we're gonna count down. So, three, two, one, go. So, this is Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that I'm jumping around like a moron. And if you know anything about Ghouls and Ghosts, you know that you're locked into your jump. Like, I can't go backwards once I lock into a jump forwards. And you, you're thinking, you know, why would I... Well, oh, shit. <laughs> Got hit. Um, Alright. So you would be thinking, well, why in the heck did I just... Am I jumping everywhere? Isn't that a lot more risky? And, yeah, it's risky. But, fortunately, uh, it also saves time, so it's worth it. We're going to do a cool thing here. Hopefully do a cool thing here. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Yeah, that saves like 10 seconds. It's It doesn't look like much, but that saves a lot of time over killing everything. And this is Shielder. He's the boss of this stage. I die to him a lot. Uh, he gave me a good pattern, so we're good. Finished with a 111. Uh, that was mostly because of the death in the middle. I shouldn't have gotten hit, but I did. This is stage two. This is turtles. Turtles are completely random uh, in arcade mode. And sometimes they just give you the worst patterns. This isn't the worst it could be, but it definitely could have been better. That's an X. So... What I want to do for weapons in this game is I want to get the dagger, which I'll get in stage 3, or if I'm lucky enough to get it anywhere else, uh, get it. But any other weapon is going to waste a lot of time. And I'm going to have lances for the first two levels because knife is a luck gamble. Armor, pretty good armor. There's not a, there's not a ton else to say uh, about this game. Oh, tricky maneuver there. Do this boost. Saves a bit of time. Don't have to wait for the bats. Got a good pattern on the bats. Because I got a boost that was actually unfavorable. Um, in arcade version. But I ended up getting out anyway. Already messed up the Serb fight. So the problem with lances and why we don't keep them. Is that they shoot slow. And you can only have two of them on screen at a time. Uh, that's why we want to replace them. Because if we don't, we're going to be shooting really slow, and a lot of the boss skills are going to be really, really slow if we don't have a weapon that's dagger. We're going to be getting dagger and hopefully not replacing it um, until... Oh, there it is. Hopefully not replacing it until level 5 of the next loop, because you do play through this game twice um, to get the true ending, and I will be doing that. So, as you can see, dagger, you can shoot it faster, and as a smaller hitbox... Well, it's really about the same hitbox as Lance, um, but it goes faster, um, and you can have three out at a time. It's it's really cool, which makes short work a lot of these enemies. These enemies are hard to kill with Lance or any other weapon, although Lance and Discus are okay. Uh, hopefully, drop a weapon, yeah. So the rule of thumb is that um, on a good seat of luck, your and the enemies are gonna drop weapons. The enemies with pots, they drop score or weapons. And about every third pot enemy you kill, uh, you get a weapon, usually. And we want to time those to where they're not in a bad position, or else we'll just have to die or get the weapon by accident, um, which wastes lots of time. Like that one right there. Uh, miss the chest jump. That's fine, though. I should have no problems uh, beating the boss anyway, since I still have armor. Alright, we got through. And this is the boss. His name is Gasudo. Pretty easy fight. Uh, not a big... Whoa! What just happened? Um, sorry, technical difficulties. My whole screen turned white. Um, and I was unable to control the game. Uh, fortunately, we're back. Uh, did that wrong? I might be dying here.
All right. Whoa. All right. <laughs> All right. That was that was bizarre. Okay. So we're back in the game here. That that section was pretty good. Well, not pretty good, but it was all right. And we have this part. We're going to do a damage boost here to skip a lot. And then I'm going to try something that I shouldn't be trying, but I'm going to try it anyway. Oh, damn it. That's that's close. I, I almost did it. I almost did it. We call that the big jump. Uh, it's pretty precise, and I didn't expect to get it. I just want to try it once. Um, but now that it didn't work, I'm just going to do the regular route down. Um, I'm okay that I died there, because sometimes if you don't die in this level, um, the game will reset once you get to this boss. And this happens on arcade console, too. It's not like this is just an emulator or a side effect. It, this, this happens on actual arcade cabinets. Um, it's, it's silly, and I didn't want that to happen. Uh, we're getting a bad ohm here. Uh... Whoa. <laughs> that was a pretty bad pattern. So I'm plus 40 from my PB. It's impossible to PB now. And that's just how this game works. I died once to a really hard trick and got bad luck, and now it's impossible. Alright. So usually how you deal with these armors is that you shoot two shots and get them low to the ground. You hit them once and get them low to the ground. And like this, and then you shoot a shot up, and you shoot a shot right, and that kills them the fastest you can kill them. Of course, you're not supposed to fall off there. All right, I'm playing it super, super safe. Hopefully, that pig doesn't hit me. We're good. We damage boost off this pig. This this kill has two purposes. I'm gonna get a game over here, um, but that's fine. This kill has two purposes. Um, both to save time, because it does save time, uh, if you don't get a game over, obviously. Um, and second, is that it lowers rank. A r rank is like the difficulty system in this game. And it's determined both by your dip switches, which is, you know, mechanical stuff on the board itself that determines like how many lives you get and the difficulty. Um, it's determined by those, you know, and the starting is four. Um, the starting is, is 4 rank. Whoa. The worst shielder. But rank goes up after about a minute of, of doing stuff. Oh, I got, I got a bad pattern. Alright. Hopefully I can get through here without getting hit. Sorry. I'll go on about rank during the cutscene that's coming up. I could be dying here. This could be embarrassing. Yep, I died. I played that way too dumb. That's fine. But I could talk more about rank. So, rank is the difficulty system in this game. It goes up when you beat a stage, and after a certain amount of time elapses in a stage. And it's so high that we're going to get a bad spawn if we don't die there in like a good pace run. I've already died enough to where... I probably didn't even need to do that, but it, it, it still saves time as well, so. This level 5 has been tons of spaghetti. Not really able to. Alright. Optimally, you want to kill those guys in 3 jumps. And avoid these guys as, as good as possible. Alright, now I'm in bub with armor. This is Beelzebub. More commonly known as bub. Alright. Alright, so we're out of loop one. Oh, didn't split, whatever. But, uh, that's how harsh this game is. This game sucks a lot. Like, I died there and I lost a minute. I lost a minute to just dying to the boss because there's no checkpoints at bosses. But yeah, this is the second loop. We're doing literally the exact same levels 
except the rank is higher because we've been in the game longer. Uh, well, it would be theoretically higher if uh, I hadn't died as much as I did. Um, and there's a few enemies that are interspersed throughout that are different. Uh, for example, this eagle. This is the only example I can think of off the top of my head, but that eagle isn't there when you're playing for the first time. That first eagle that I killed. But besides that, it's mostly the same game. Uh, mostly the same tricks, same jumps. Um, you know, still not insanely difficult in the first two stages still. Not much, not much different. That's okay though. I want to talk a bit about this game's history. So, it was thought for a while that th this game was very, very hard to speedrun. Um, and I mean, it still is. Um, and then a guy who's nowhere known for Super and Golden Ghosts, his name's PJ. Um, lots of SGDQ guys, AGDQ and SGDQ people, people that grew up on that stuff. Well, grew up, quote unquote. People that got into speedrunning off of that uh, know who PJ is. Well, I got that. Um, <laughs> I died, so I, you waste 45 seconds if you die to a boss. It's dumb. And that's the worst pattern. This game isn't the most marathon safe, but he thought it was very hard to beat simply because of just how this game works and how stupid difficult it is. Um, he made a route, and then the person that got to optimizing it and clean it, you know, clearing good runs, this guy named Aquas, he had the world record for almost ever. He was, he's, and he was and still is a really good player. Um, and he had the world record for a long time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My split button's next to the MAME options menu, so that happens sometimes. But yeah, he... Oh, I got hit in turtles. That's unfortunate. And he lowered the record down a lot. He got it to a 1524, uh, or, yeah, 1523, 20... 1523, uh, before he ended up not playing the game anymore, and that's understandable. This game drives people to madness. Um, and then lots of people, like, all at once in early 2016. Oh, no, early 2017 sprung up. There's a guy named Zed, a guy named Fred, and me. Um, I'm going armorless. I shouldn't have done this. I should have died at the checkpoint. Because I'm going to be wasting more time if I die here. And it's easy to die here. All right, never mind. We're good. And then we exchanged records, uh, Zed and I, for a while back. For a while, Fred was also in the mix. We all played. That was a really good serve. We all played. We all got better at a point uh, until like December, when Zed, one of them. He had already gotten a sub-16. I have a sub-16. Sub-16 has only been accomplished by four people. Um, only three people in the actual arcade version. Um, it's a very difficult feat, and you need to have, like, actual... You have to have actual skill and luck on your side uh, in order to complete a sub-16 run. Oh, whoa. I got turned into a duck. So that's what the magic guy does. He'll shoot stuff at you. And you turn into a duck sometimes. If you have no armor, you turn into an old man. I don't have any armor. This is scary. Jeez. Alright. Not scary anymore. So yeah. He got the record. He got a 15-18. Um, and that's where the world record stands. This has been your summoning salt video. But, no, really... It, it wasn't really, it sounds, it's more epic when you actually experience it, because, you know, I knew Zed back when he had a 20 minute time, I had a 20 minute time as well, it's like, we used to be all like really bad, and now everyone is really good, like Fred's also got a sub 17, there you go, um, and it's just really cool to have all these runners who literally came from the bottom, and just became really, really good. And that was the chest jump that I was trying to exhibit earlier. It's hard to get, much harder than you'd think. Um, 
it looks deceptively easy, but it is hard. I didn't explain chess, did I? So, a big part of level 3 is chess management. Um, well, well, uh, oh no! I got the hitbox extension. I'm gonna die for that. Oh no. <sighs> That's dumb. So, if you have armor on and you shoot uh, down in midair, uh, your hitbox extends up way farther than it should. Um, and I got hit on one of those crystal snags there. Alright. That's cool. So, chess. So, the first and second chests... So, when you have armor, the first chest has... Well, always the first chest has a magician. The second chest has gold armor if you have iron armor so you want to keep iron armor throughout the level i'm gonna try big jump again just for for giggles yeah i got it so that that's a cool thing it saves like two seconds and it's super difficult oh no oh please don't reset on me So this is what I was talking about. I sh should have taken a death. Because if that worm despawns, there's supposed to be two worms, as you saw in loop one. If you don't get a second worm and it despawns, there's a low chance that your game crashes and resets. And since I don't have any save states um, with this emulator, I would have just had to call time right there. Um... So yeah, crisis averted. So, what we're doing here is... The whole point of going through loop 2 is because Princess Prin Prin wants you to have her bracelet, or the Psycho Cannon in this game. Um, so y you have to get the Psycho Cannon, which you have to have gold armor and pick up a weapon chest. So you get the gold armor in chest 2, and you get the Psycho Cannon in chest 3, which is what I just did. I'm gonna... It's not actually faster to do the damage boost uh, and the death boost here if you already have gold armor and if you do it optimally. Of course, I didn't do it optimally, but that's fine. That just means I get to have gold armor going into these fights, which makes them easier. Although Psycho Cannon, as you can see, is a lot easier to use. It blocks projectiles, like blocks these fireballs from these shielders, um, and it just decimates enemies. It's absolutely insane. Like, you can kill er these Astaroths in one jump, when you can only kill them in three jumps with knife. The only thing that this weapon doesn't have... Oh, no. Oh, no. I have to die. Wait, no, I don't. <laughs> That's the best backup. Usually you just straight up die there. Alright, got the one cycle bum, and we're on to the last boss. Again, Psycho Cannon rips through things. If if you go into bub without Psycho Cannon, uh, you just... And that is time. Sorry, I didn't give a warning about time. I still wanted to talk about the game. Um, but, yeah, if you go into bub without the Psycho Cannon... Um, you get this thing where it just tells you to go back, and you go back to the beginning of stage 5. Um, so I didn't want that. I still had gold armor, though, so I got the 6th chest, which always has a weapon if you have gold armor. And I got the Psycho Cannon again. That was a clutch save. That's the first time I've ever done that. Um, so my time was an 8.36. Man, that was... That's better than I thought it was going to be, to be completely honest. And that's with two deaths in 1.5. I'd, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm happy with that. Uh, again, I had some problems in 1-4 um, because of uh, of bad luck. Yeah, I, I, I got bad luck in the Ohm fight, which is the name of the level 4 boss. And then I died to the shielder in 2-1. Then I had the 
the mess up in 2-5, which wasn't really my fault. And then I had a good Lucifer, who was the last boss that you just saw me climb on top of his leg, like a kid. Yeah, th thank you, David, for the congratulation. What are we talking about? Explod was talking about something. Challenge anyone to do a deathless stage of that game on the first playthrough. Easy. Easy, easy stuff. Come on, man. I, I definitely do it all the time. Like, this isn't indicative. I wish I had a better run, um, but I didn't. Because this... This is a really fun run to watch if uh, if the player is good. But I died a lot. I got I had two continues or was it just one? I think it was just one continue. If it's just one continue, that was really good. Um one continue is it was what I was aiming for. Uh zero continues is is very hard. There's only one person that I know that I would trust to get a one or zero continue run every single time and that's Aquas the previous world record holder, because his consistency is just insanity. If you want, you can take my place for the trifecta low percent. I do, like... Hmm. I, uh... I could do plague low percent, maybe. But I don't actually know any of the movement. <laughs> so, it'd be me learning plague low percent. Uh, I don't think anyone wants that. I could also... Yeah, it'd be all blind. That sucks. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> but yeah. This is Ghouls and Ghosts. This is the arcade version. Um, I encourage everyone to play this game. This this game is, is really fun. It's very difficult, but it's very fun. And if you're a, you know a platform guy, check it out. Because it's just really, really good. It's really, really good. So, put my usual name. Not my usual name, but just a meme. So, I think the highest score anyone's gotten in a run is like uh, 1,000 or 1 billion 200,000. That's pretty good. Um, what I did, yeah, that was that was a good run. I, I think that was a good run. All right, I'm gonna stop hogging the mic. I'm gonna let Explod. Uh, switch over to the next game, which is his game. Uh, this will be Shovel Knight, uh, low percent with all three characters, Shovel, Plague, and Spectre. He's good at all of them, so I am, would be excited to see that, but I actually have a race in an hour, so I need to go do that and prepare for that in another game. So, alright, thanks everyone for watching, and stick around for the Explorathon.